Okay, guys. Um, I have the honor of, um, hold on one second, let me, there we go. I have the honor of introducing our next speaker, Dr. Kristen Missouri. And I also get to work with her at Texas Tech. So um, not only getting to know her personally, but also working in the writing groups that she organizes and, and is the director of here at Texas Tech. Um, so Dr. Kristen Missouri is the managing director of the writing centers here at CTU, Texas Tech, where I'm at. Um, in her position, she develops initiatives to enhance writing and research, including consultation services, writing groups, and workshops. She's the co-founder and co-director of Texas Tech's Women Faculty Writing Program, and she actually researches writing initiatives like writing groups, and it looks at workings and efficiencies of writing groups, the implementation of diversity and inclusion initiatives in writing centers, and genuinely brings a lot of uh, great opportunities to he us here at Texas Tech. Um, she's genu generously offered to tell us about writing groups and also share some of her research findings. So with that, I will turn it over to Kristen to introduce us to writing groups. As Lauren said, I'm managing director of our writing centers of Texas Tech. Um, one of my research areas, which is a little bit unique among writing center directors and writing studies folks, um, is studying faculty and graduate writers. Um, the reason for that is really that we have what I think of as a myth of this prolific graduate and faculty writer. Um, so in her groundbreaking collection on um, faculty writers, um, Anne Ellen Geller starts with this image of this idealized faculty writer um, who struggles alone, is brilliant alone, and succeeds alone. Um, so if you're thinking of a faculty writer sitting in her office, typing away productively, um, who already possesses really strong written communication skills to publish in this person's field, who writes easily, who writes consistently, who's inspired by ideas and easily transmits them to the page and is published consistently, um, who writes independently and without any kind of social and structural support. That is probably true of some people, um, but not most. That's not typically what an actual graduate or faculty writer's experience is. Um, the reality is more of a faculty or graduate writer working alone and within communities. Um, we know from the research and writing studies that these folks are actually often learning to write on the job once they get that faculty position. Um, so the vast majority um, of graduate programs do not offer curricular writing support, including in writing studies. We teach people how to write. Our focus is the pedagogy and practice of writing. We don't actually teach our graduate students how to write as part of our curriculum. Um, and that is true pretty universally um, in academic programs. Typically, due to some of these misperceptions that support is not needed, graduate and especially faculty writers lack such support. Um, and then there are also numerous structural barriers to tenure and promotion. Um, we know that um, women faculty are promoted at um, lower rates compared to male colleagues. Um, we know that structural issues are compounded for faculty of color and other minoritized faculty. Um, you know, I won't get too far into the weeds with this, but um, but this is something that's been proven um, in across the board in many fields. Um, and then I wanted to think about writing groups as one important structure that promotes graduate student and faculty success. Um, so it's typical when we think about writing groups um, to maybe have one idea of what this looks like, or maybe you have no idea. Um, so I'm sharing with you um, a typology of writing groups um, that was developed um, by Sarah Haas. Um, basically what she did was she looked at writing groups in practice and came up with these 11 dimensions. Um, her, her chapter on this is called Pick and Mix, a typology of writing groups. Um, and the idea is that you could actually look at these dimensions and construct a group that meets your needs. Um, so the first is the purpose of the group. Um, the purpose of the group is often to write, to provide support to writers in a, in a community setting. Um, but if you're thinking of a writing group that um, shares feedback, that's common but not required. Some groups, like our groups at Texas Tech, really just support, just provide time and space for writing. Um, but really thinking about what is the purpose of this group. The second dimension is membership. So that's something like the number of participants, the discipline that they're in. Um, leadership is the third dimension, and that is, um, you know, there could be no leader. It could just be sort of a democratic setting. Um, it could be peer-led. It could be led by an expert. Um, you know, that's that's something that the group determines. Um, 
There are also different modes of contact. Some groups meet face-to-face, -face, um, especially increasingly we're seeing remote writing groups or some kind of hybrid structure, um, something like that. Um, time of day, you might choose a place of meeting, whether that's on Zoom, a place on campus perhaps, coffee shop, you name it. Um, the seventh dimension is the frequency of meetings. So are you meeting weekly? Are you meeting biweekly? Are you meeting once a semester? Whatever it might be. Um, what is the length of that meeting? Is it an hour long? If you have, this is really closely tied to purpose because if you're doing a lot of things, if you're writing collaboratively together or using this as independent writing time, um, that length of meeting might need to reflect that. Um, and then the duration of the group. Is this a group that you're going to have on an ongoing basis? Is this a, is this a group that will meet throughout a semester and then um, you'll reassess? Um, the 10th is the in-meeting activities, and this is something that might actually fluctuate as time goes on and the members um, kind of adapt to their changing needs. Um, so some common ones might include goal setting, writing, reading one another's work, providing feedback to one another. Again, you can see how this is closely tied to purpose. Um, and then the between meeting activities. So for most groups, that would include some self-directed writing. If you're only writing in that time that your group meets, you're not making a lot of progress, um, but that you know might vary for different people as well. Um, often in academic settings, it includes publishing. Um, also, people might respond to one another's writing depending on the purpose of the group. Um, so those are the 11 dimensions of writing groups, what they might look like. But I wanted to share one successful writing group structure, um, which is the Texas Tech University Weekly Faculty Writing Program, um, which Lauren and I are both members of. Um, this has been going on since 2015. Um, it was um, developed based on successful writing programs at Indiana University. Um, but I wanted to use this just as one example. Um, so the purpose of these groups is to provide support, um, to develop a multidisciplinary community, um, and to dedicate time and space for writing. So our membership reflects that purpose. Um, we have about 100 faculty from all different disciplines um, represented. Now, having 100 people in one writing group isn't really feasible. So we really think about this as a writing program, and then we break it out into groups of five to 10 people. Um, when you're thinking about um, membership of a group, um, you'll want to think about how many people can show up to a meeting so that um, you still have buy-in. If it's too small, sometimes the buy-in isn't there. Um, but if it's too large, then sometimes um, people also don't feel connected to it. Um, so that's something to kind of consider as you, as you think about a writing group. Um, in our groups, we like to have people from all different disciplines because it encourages um, collaborations, both formal and informal, um, and gets people to sort of know one another in a capacity that they probably wouldn't have. Um, so when I go to my writing group and I have people from biology and I have people who are from the English department and the arts um, and you know the College of Business, that's a really unique atmosphere um, that I really value. But I also have writing groups that are in my own discipline and those are differently useful because we all kind of speak the same language, we have similar research, we have a similar knowledge base. Um, so that's something that works really, really well too. Um, the leadership of this particular group is peer-led in that we have faculty facilitators, um, and the contact is that they meet in person or on Zoom. Um, so, you know, some groups will meet in a dedicated room on campus, same room every week, um, but a lot of the groups do meet on Zoom to accommodate, um, you know, different schedules, different needs like that. Um, time of day for this group, we select different days and times of the, of the um, groups. So we have a group that always meets on Thursdays from one to four. And we have a group that always meets on Wednesdays from three to six. Um, so we like that kind of consistency and set time. Um, the place of the meeting, like I said, is that room on campus or Zoom. Um, and the frequency is weekly for these groups. So we like that sort of consistent meeting time. Um, for these meetings, we meet for three hours. It's a half hour of discussion, um, which we've found is so valuable in thinking through issues that we're seeing and learning more about writing uh, and that kind of thing. Um, and then we have two and a half hours of dedicated writing time. So these are especially useful for people who have difficulty finding time in their schedule for writing. Um, so having that two and a half hours a week has been really valuable. And then the groups um, last for one semester. <clears throat> kind of on an ongoing basis. So every semester we have applications, we put people in groups, and then um, you know those meet throughout the semester. The next semester we have that same process to find something that fits everyone's schedules. 
in the meetings, we talk about a, write, a reading or a topic during that first 30 minutes. We set goals and then we write. Um, and I wanted to note that writing in this context is really broadly defined. I don't necessarily mean drafting, like putting words on a page. It could be data analysis. It could be corresponding with a co-author. It could be revision. So thinking about writing expansively is useful when you're thinking about writing groups um, because it's first of all reflective of the actual work you need to do, um, but then also um, you know sort of enhances your productivity. If some people feel bad if they're not using that time for drafting, but that is but one part of a writing process. Um, so I would encourage you to think about that as well. And then between meetings, um, again we do self-directed writing. We all work on our own projects. We publish, and then the group also does some retreats and social events um, to enhance that sense of community. Um, writing groups uh, have been found to be beneficial, and here I'll share some of my own research. Um, a lot of it is, um, a lot of this research comes out of work that I've done on the writing groups um, with Dr. Elizabeth Sharp, who's a professor of human development and family sciences at Texas Tech. Um, she's a co-founder and co-directs the group with me. Um, but we found that they really facilitate the development of professional identities. And this it dovetails with a lot of research, especially um, on graduate writers, that writing is a way that we um, enact these professional identities and join discourse communities. One way that you might do that is with a writing group. Um, my co-author and I have also found that they enhance mentorship, leadership, and administrative skills. So in facilitating groups in particular, um, faculty learn to mentor other faculty. Um, they take some of that work that they do in writing groups and apply it to their work with graduate students or undergraduate students. Um, and it enhances their confidence and leadership skills. It also enhances their writing skills because they're practicing it um, every week, at least. Um, as I mentioned, it establishes dedicated time and space for research, which results in increased productivity. And then also in our case, and because these are institutionally embedded groups, it increases participants' sense of belonging at the institution. Um, and I know that this group is introducing a writing calendar, and I, am, I, would, I would imagine that we might extrapolate that um, to think about sense of belonging to the Academy of Management, to the management field. Um, for minoritized faculty, we also found that it mitigates the chilly climate of academia um, because it does foster spaces that are psychologically safe, um, which is something that um, we've really valued in our groups at our institution. Um, so in conclusion, for a lot of faculty, these writing groups can really become rich communities that enhance productivity and encourage those meaningful relationships, ultimately sustaining their research over time at different stages of their career. I will stop there for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, that's so fascinating to hear. I love how much research has been done about all the benefits of these writing groups. So thank you for sharing all of that with us and the different formats it can have and the considerations. Um, Kristen has generously offered to stick around for the remainder of the session. So if you have questions for her, um, pop them in the chat. I think she might be able to either address them or we can save them um, for some question and answer time period at the end as well. So thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Um, with that, um, I'm also really excited to hear from Bobby and Kira about their experiences with writing groups, because I know that um, they both just raved about how much these have made a difference in their own work productivity. Um, so I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give them a quick introduction. Um, so Dr. Kira Shabram is a, an assistant professor of management at the University of Washington's Foster School of Business. Her research in, uh, interests include burnout, well-being, meaningful work, compassion, and dark side behaviors. Um, and she was really excited to join us for this because she says that she's been involved with writing groups since she was a doc student in 2014, um, and that it's made a difference throughout her whole kind of career in academia so far. Um, she teaches a session on writing groups in the PhD program writing workshop at UW, so those students are very lucky to have her expertise there. Um, and Dr. Bobby Thomason is an assistant professor of applied behavioral sciences at Pepperdine's Graziadano, Graziadio Business School. I'm sorry, I always butcher that word. Um, her research interests include understanding the career development of traditionally underrepresented groups and how individuals in these groups overcome inequities um, and inequalities with social hierarchies to attain career success. 
Um, I'm fortunate to have gone to the Women of Organizational Behavior Writing Retreat that Bobby initiated and organized. Um, so it's this annual retreat um, that brings people together for writing groups. Um, and she's also an advocate for online writing retreats as well through the Women of OB group. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Bobby and Kira. And I'm so excited to hear what you both have to say. Thank you so much. Um, so Bobby and I hopped on a call, Bobby was on Wednesday, um, mm -hmm. to brief, yeah, to briefly chat about, we were worried our groups were identical and turns out they're quite different. So we thought we'd just give you an overview of how our works and then have a chat about what our favorite parts are. And so maybe Bobby, I'll let you go first. Sounds great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining uh, this morning, afternoon, evening for some of us. And thank you so much to our wonderful organizers for bringing this together. So I started in uh, the writing groups I'll be talking about today. Three years ago, it was the middle of the pandemic, and Dolly Chug posted on uh, the Women of Organizational Behavior, which is a Facebook group. So for uh, females in the group, if you are already a faculty member, please feel free to send a note and we'll help you get connected. And if you're about to be a faculty member one day, keep us in mind when you do. And it's this online forum that we share professional uh, advice and, and have a dialogue. And Dolly just said, I'm I need some community and accountability and I'm going to do writing retreats every day this week, sign on, join, whatever you need to do. If it's writing, if it's take a shower, if it's take a walk, just come have some company. And as probably many of us felt during the pandemic, the idea of just being in community with other people was so wildly appealing. And, um, and three years later, I still join these online groups many days a week. Um, I really want to credit Dolly for starting with such a warm, inclusive, and low stakes tone. Um, so now Dolly is not the only one that puts these uh, retreats on the calendar. Really, anyone can just say, okay, I'm going to uh, either plan in advance a few hours, or even we have a shared calendar. If you just realize you're sitting at your computer, can sign up and, and put something on in real time. And we work in Pomodoro, so they're 25 minutes of writing, we go off screen, and then we are together for five minutes um, for a break in which we get to chat. And sometimes that is personal conversation, and sometimes it's uh, professional about the content of what we're writing about or uh, asking for help strategizing on a revision or department dynamics. And I just came to enjoy these women so much that I got thinking about how can I have more of this in my life? I just want to spend time with them more often. And so I am at Pepperdine and that is in Malibu. And it seems like a well-suited place to say, you know, when it's really cold in a lot of other parts of the country, why don't we come hang out here? And so last year was the first in-person uh, Women of Organizational Behavior writing retreat. It was many women that joined the virtual writing sessions, but not only. Uh, there were some women that had not joined the online sessions and we had two days together in which we did also work in Pomodoros for several hours a day, but we also took a hike in the morning, had long lunches, long dinners. Um, I really think that you know, Kara and I will talk more about what we like about our writing retreat, um, but my preview is that part of what's important to me is the time we aren't writing uh, and just the connection that this can offer and how writing does not have to be the solitary, miserable part of our job. For me, what's really special about these two uh, groups is that they just make me happy. I want to sign on and, and see these folks and and I'm so happy lots of women from our from both groups are on the, the Zoom right now, which I think is a testament to um, our eagerness to spend time together. So that's all. I'll, I'll turn it back over to you for now and look forward to hearing about yours. Okay. Um, 
Thank you. I, so as was mentioned earlier, I've been in the same writing group. I looked it up. It was early 2013. Um, so what happened for me is I was a cohort of one as a PhD student. I don't know if there's any other PhD students in the room for whom that was the experience. And then also our PhD program stayed incredibly small. So over my six years in the PhD program, there were only really three other students that showed up a couple of years later. So it was always just me. And so at a micro conference, May Meaning Meeting, um, I see some members in the room, um, we were chatting and there were some other PhD students at other universities who were in a similar position. And we were just really lonely and lost. Um, I also hadn't come from an academic background. So the whole thing was new to me and I just felt very lost. And so we created this writing group and I love that slide of the 12 guidelines because we just figured it out over time. It wasn't anything that we really planned ahead of time. But so what ultimately ended up happening is that over the last 10 years, ours is a feedback group. So we don't write together. We write in our own time and then we get together and provide feedback. And it has varied over the years, whether once a week or every other week, um, but we've never done it less than that. And so it's an hour, either weekly or every other week. Membership has changed. People have had kids. People have had left academia. Um, but we've always had between three and six, so much smaller than the other groups being described here. For me, three is almost kind of the sweet spot because it allows you to both socialize in that hour and then to provide feedback. And so what happens is every week, Whoever wants to send in something will send in something. And as was mentioned before, it isn't strictly writing. Yes, there's a lot of writing samples, but there's also CVs when people have wanted to hit the market or, you know, kind of sensitive emails we need to send to our chair or a colleague, really anything and everything. So I think Bobby and I may talk about this, but you have to have trust in that space. I think we're extremely vulnerable in it. And so you just share whatever you need feedback on. And so what has happened is, it keeps you accountable, yes, but much more so there are other people out there who can give you another perspective and who can give you a perspective, not just on that particular item, but they really know you. We've grown up together. You know, when we started this group, we were all doctoral students and now we are we're, we're actually publishing stuff. And I know the title is Tools for Becoming a Prolific Writer. I'm by far the least prolific person in my writing group. So right now it's Chris Myers and Ashley Harden who are already editors now. And I'm, I'm learning from them, but so we're growing up together. They know my writing style. And so they can really give me feedback. Um, one other thing that it's really helped with, less so now I'd like to think 10 years in, though you can be the judge of that, is English is not my first language. I just hide it really well. And so especially early on, it was just so helpful to have some native speakers read my writing and make sure that it worked. So just having that perspective has been great. And so, yeah, we meet weekly for one hour. You send stuff in and then we workshop it together. Um, the final point we do not have a retreat in Malibu, though that sounds really nice. Um, what we have done, though, and let me stress that we are all introverts. So this isn't something that comes natural, but we tend to share hotel rooms at Academy or at some other conferences if we know we're all going to be there. Because then you can kind of gossip at the end of the day or in between and talk about your work and talk about life. And so... It's interesting to me that even though we both have remote groups and ours back in the day was on a really clunky Skype system that always crashed, but we, it seems to be really helpful to meet in person at some point to kind of keep the community going. Yeah, so Bobby, should, I don't know, should we talk about things we like most, overlap? How, what would you like to talk about? Sure, let, yeah, I'd love to talk about some of the things I love most and hear more about yours. Um, I do think that the idea that connection is front and center um, is something that's common across the groups I've been a part of. In our virtual writing sessions, because we're across all different time zones, um, and also I think because of the tone and of the original meetings, I generally join them early in the morning when my six-year-old daughter is still asleep. And so, this group of women sees me every morning in my, when I rolled out of bed with my coffee, there's something very cozy and trusting and intimate. And my writing ends when my daughter wakes up. And sometimes that is her coming on the screen to crash and say hello, because she knows these faces. So I really appreciate the connection that is possible. And that translates into having people that you can trust when it is something more profound than how you look at 5.30 in the morning. Um, 
which I think also gets to something that Kira and I got to chat a little bit about is the idea that they're across your institution. And so sometimes it can be really helpful to get other perspectives around what are standards or what are other ways of doing things. And sometimes it's because you have something sensitive to ask about and and there is security and safety in talking to someone who's not at your home institution. So I also really like um, the breadth. Um, and I think the third, maybe even fourth thing I'll say, if I can squeeze in two, uh, think finding different ways of being inclusive. So I think that for the virtual group, one thing that's really nice is that it's virtual and also that we have developed a norm of you can come and leave when you need to. So I generally am there at the beginning, but I often fall off because my daughter woke up. Other people may join later because they're coming from a meeting or any any reason that you don't really need to have a reason. So um, thinking of ways you can make it accessible, for the in-person writing retreat, one of the things that I spend a lot of time focusing on is the tables that people sit at. And so I, in different sessions, we um, we break into multiple palms of these essentially 30 minute sessions. We'll do each in a few hours. And so I assign the tables for each and, a, and move around institutions, seniority, uh, research focuses so that it doesn't get clicky. Uh, our name tags at the retreat don't have institutions on them. It's just everyone's name. And so depending on your uh, your context, your population, there may be different ways. But I, I think putting thought into how people can feel belonging is really useful. And the last thing I'll say that really, I think, helps with these Pomodoros, which I had not used until being introduced them by Dolly, is that it's 25 minutes. And um, that's a very bearable period of time. And some, I really think too, I, I shared with Kira the, the word prolific felt a little bit daunting. And to me, <laughs> my writing groups are, are uh, I don't, it, it feels funny to own that word, particularly because these, to me, writing groups are about being happy and being around people that energize me. Um, but 20, it also is something really nice to have some accountability for. I can start, you know, I was picking up a paper yesterday that I haven't looked at in a few months and just knowing, okay, just take 25 minutes and see where you are. Um, making those those incremental bits or I'm going to take one writing group session um, can be nice for, oftentimes our goals as academics just are big and daunting. And I like the structure that can um, make writing feel like a manageable task. Yeah. What about you, Kira? What are the I mean, things you like? I think I want to echo everything you're saying. As you were talking, I was just writing down, like, how do I distill what she's saying into maybe guidance to the people in the room who are thinking about starting one? So I think the one thing we completely agree on is you got to do it with people that you like. That's probably my top priority, more so than do they have the same expertise or, um, because in terms of showing up, I think that's the only way you're going to show up. Um, you know, we were sent a list of questions and it was, how do you keep this thing going? You can't force people to come, right? And so you kind of want to do it. Um, I'm going to get a little vulnerable here, but last week was probably one of the hardest weeks of my life. Um, I've been really sick. We had a death in the family. And so I canceled class and everything on Thursday. The one thing I didn't cancel was my writing group. And that's not because I'm a martyr or I have to get stuff out, although I do, but it's just because I was just in my sweatpants. I just cried. I was sitting in bed and it was nice to just be around people who are my friends. And so I think having community, having people that you like is way more important than anything else. Uh, in terms of being at other schools, when we started our writing group, we thought that was just a cost we had to live with. There's just no other way to do it because there's no other PhD students there. And when I give the writing workshop here, I often get students saying, I don't know if there's someone else here in my area of writing. And I actually think we stumbled upon something really lucky that no one is at the same school in our writing group. I think that is such a strength for those of you who feel alone at your school because it allows you to get different perspectives. It also allows you to be a lot more honest and vulnerable. Again, ours is a safe space. We talk about things that are happening in our department and we get advice. And so I think the remote thing is such a boon to take advantage of ideally paired with some sort of meeting in person at some point. I think for me, that's just the best combination, but I wouldn't 
think, oh, a writing group won't work for me because there's no one else in my geographic area. I would say the opposite is true. Find people that you like elsewhere and you're going to want to join them. Um, yeah, I think those were my main points. Now I've lost my train of thought. Bobby. <laughs> I, sure. I, um, what I hope we're getting to is on the idea of one, take taking the leap if you have considered joining a, a writing group and are not sure of them. But also, I hope this session um, would encourage you to think about starting one if there is not one that works for you um, or if there's something that you're looking for that you need, whether it's a population you want to be with, a way of meeting you want to be, a type of writing you want to work on. Um, there are so many forms and I'm really delighted that there will be a way of gathering this community at least I believe a calendar is going to be sent out that uh, those of us that are on the call can um, start writing together as well. Yeah I wonder if there's some way since we've talked I've wondered if you could combine the two because I never even thought about a writing group as being about sitting together and writing which in hindsight is kind of silly right but it's kind of a cool idea I wonder if one would join two groups because there is already an infrastructure through the OB division now for the writing groups um, and then do your own editing group if that's something you're interested in. I, I, I'm having a hard time thinking about how to scale ours, this feedback one, because there's no way to do it with 10 people. The largest our group's ever been has been six and even that was tricky. We ended up restricting it to who could submit every other week and it kind of lost some of that natural rapport. So I do wonder if there are size limits on one versus the other. If you're starting a writing group, do you dip your feet into the writing one? Do you, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think that through as we're talking. I think it's such a good question. And I, you know, as Karen and I had the chance to chat on Wednesday, and it really got us thinking about how certain norms are necessary or wouldn't work in the others um, group. But I think if you are having a feedback group that is based, a, a writing group that is based on feedback, you do need more shared, uh, both I think expertise to know about what what are the journals and the outlets. Um, also as a shared sense of commitment that it takes extra time to read other people's work mm -hmm. and offer feedback in advance. Um, and then, you know, whereas with my group, the, the writing groups were writing totally independently and that sparks conversations in the breaks and some people will share feedback and, and we've done that offline and um but it does not require any um coordination so i could very much see that you could be in writing groups that serve different purposes and then i think it's up to each person's call as to what the tipping point is of you know 17 writing groups is too much and it, I'm just seeing. Um, I saw the comment. Can question. You, yeah, will you speak on that? Absolutely. So, um, Susan was asking the Pomodoro technique, and it the structure is writing for 25 minutes or doing whatever focused work. So that means no email, no checking Facebook. Um, just really focus on your task for 25 minutes, and then a five minute break. My understanding of the um, logic behind that is in part to bound your task, to know, okay, I, I have this big task. I don't know how I'm going to do months of work, but I can do 25 minutes. Um, part of it is that oftentimes when the 25 minute buzzer goes off, you are in the zone. And so you may be eager to get back in, you stay refreshed um, in, in a way that you might not if you just sat there and wrote for four hours and by hour two and a half, you're staring at your screen and maybe you don't actually get as much done in the last 90 minutes. So I think it's that idea of um, of, of staying fresh and sort of pausing before you're totally maxed out. And I think you have a question too, Kira, here. About that, yeah. Asia. I'll I'll speak a little bit more on the feedback group. Um, let me be transparent that, and maybe I'm in the minority. I love to write. I've never had a problem writing. The data analysis, honestly, I hate it. I hate it. You'll have to push me to do that. But the writing I like. So that hasn't been it for me. What I've really missed in this profession is 
we don't really seem to have editors the way traditional publishing has. Someone that works with you and knows your voice and crafts it better. You can hire copy editors these days. Um, and I know some of the former HBR editors, sometimes email listservs and say we can help. But we don't really have a function of someone who's just trying to make your voice better. A friendly review doesn't quite do that for you because it's a lot to ask. And if you're already out for review, then hopefully it's constructive, but, it, but it's not someone who knows who you are by virtue of being blind. So for me, the feedback group is just really helpful. And here's what I've written, gut check. And so if you are interested in one of those groups, I think Bobby made a really important point that I hadn't articulated before is that you're going to want people who are publishing in the same outlets as you. I think that's really important. So what journals are they publishing in? I don't think they need to have the same expertise. And in fact, I think it might be a good thing if they don't. So Chris Myers is learning and Ashley Harden is work-life balance. And those are not really my area, though we obviously overlap. And it's really helpful to have someone who doesn't study meaningful work kind of shake me and go, what are you trying to say? What does this mean? And so I would argue for a feedback group, people who are trying to publish in the same outlets, they're dealing with the same editors and reviewers, but they don't need to have your expertise. In terms of do we share feedback? We ask that you send it by midnight the day before. And if it's going to be more than five pages double space, please respect people's times and send it even earlier. So we we do send it ahead of time and then we skim or read. And it's become more skimming over the years as we know each other better because we all, Chris loves parentheticals. There's always three parentheses in every sentence. I love weird foreign terms, right? So people start to know how you write and can kind of ding you and say, you're doing that thing you're doing. So it's gotten faster as we've gotten to know each other to review them. Yeah. Trying to think what else we could. Are there other questions in the chat? Hi, yes. Um, I we have some great questions in the chat actually. Um, we have one question from Roman who has asked, um, I think you guys have touched on it, but um he's asked, like, how to start? So how to assemble and engage the right group of people. So maybe you can touch on um, I know you kind of have both talked about your experience with starting it, but if you have any advice for say like grad students um or junior faculty who might want to try to jump into these and find the right group of people too. Sure. I, I mean, the first place I would start with would be um, think about the people you want to be with. So if there are individuals that you like, um, I would reach out to them directly. I heard early in my academic career, I heard someone say, I just co-author with my friends because you spend so much time together. They're the people I want to hang out with. And there, are, there may be more people you want to see than you can co-author with. And so I think writing groups could be one chance of just saying, hey, I'd like to see you more often. Could we set up a time to, to do this together? Um, but I also, Dolly's call of the virtual writing group and also the, you know, the calls for my writing retreats is just anyone that wants to come. And so I also, if I'm saying just, you know, reach out to the people you like and start something, if, if that's actually the daunting part and you are, you know, Kira talks about being early in her doctoral student career and it being re feeling really isolated or, uh, our writing group started very much from the pandemic. Um, I, I think Theo, I would really encourage the leap of just throwing it into the abyss. If it's a uh, a listserv, uh, you know, the management PhD, Google Doc, um, what whatever outlet you have for putting out a big call, I I think is really welcome. Um, you know, Karen and I have both talked a lot about the vulnerability that is important in these groups. And that is, it is just so, so meaningful to me to have those communities. And so I think one way you can start that vulnerability is to, to say, hey, I, I could use some company or hey, I could use some accountability and I'm sure you are not the only person feeling it. I mean, I wish there had been something like the OB division calendar that's been set up now, which I'll be joining after the session. So that seems to be like the easiest way of the divisions are doing it for you. If you are looking for something a little bit more intense, like our feedback group, exactly what Bobby said, reach out to people who you like. Given the amount of people in this room, it sounds like we all need this or a lot of us need this. And so just reaching out to someone, they may be feeling the same way. Um, if you are interested in my model, 
you probably need three. I would start with three because with two, one person gets sick or something, it falls apart. Now your routine is broken and who knows if you're going to try again the next week. I think, and Bobby made this point as well, you need enough momentum that someone's going to show up. So we still meet if one of us just can't, then the other two do. So I would say ideally at least three. Um, the one other thing we hadn't mentioned, but we also have a text chat group. So we're at that level of community now. I don't know if that's happening for you, but so... We meet weekly, but we also often will briefly text each other for a gut check on something quick. So it keeps going that way as well. And so again, it needs to be a person that you're comfortable texting with, um, I, I think would be helpful. Um, That's a great point. I think Sandra had her hand up. Please. Do you wanna jump in with a question, Sandra? Yeah, someone asked me to write it in the chat, but I'm better. I wanna figure out what I wanna ask. So maybe- Okay me to talk. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Kira. Thank you, everyone. I'm Sandra. I'm in, in, at Columbia Business School now. Um, so I have a question about process. So I have, I'm a qualitative scholar and people have told me that it's important for me to have a solo publication. So my good friend, Audrey Holm and I meet every day for two hours to write about our different papers, my r, &R and her paper on expertise. But then every time that we have something to do, because she's at, the, I should say, Paris, and I'm in New York, and we're both moms, I just don't show up to my writing. Like, I kind of need, Audrey is kind of like my emotional support friend. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to, you know, get over that block. So now I'm thinking of what Kira said, which is make it three instead of two. Um, I don't know. And I just want to say that one of the reasons why I was so so happy when I got a faculty job is because now I can join the women of OB group, which I couldn't as a grad student. So yay for that. I'm, I'm so delighted you'll be uh, joining WOB and, you know, and I, again, just to the point of putting out the call that started because Katie DeSellis just started a Facebook group and then people invited each other and it snowballed and it's turned into this beautiful forum. So um, I really do encourage the broad calls where you if you have a, you know, something like a writing group that can allow for more independent togetherness. Um, but I, I really hear you on, Sandra, on the idea of this structure may work for a period of time and it may stop working. Like it may be that the two of you really appreciate, admire, support one another, and then you want to tweak your structure. So you know, one thing I haven't talked about is writing groups that I've left or that have fallen apart. And and I was part of a writing group that was structured like Kira's feedback group that started really small. And it grew such that there was no longer alignment of outlets or topics or even those personal relationships. Um, and so, Sandra, I hope yours... I. I don't say that to be a downer, although if a writing group isn't serving you, it may be worth pointing out. You don't have to stay in them forever. But also, Sandra, you might have one that you like elements and then you um, you just tweak them together and your writing group might evolve. So I think I loved um, the, the slide earlier to get us thinking about all of the dimensions Kristen outlined um, so I think that would be like a great starting place for, okay, these are the dimensions we want to keep, but what other dimensions might we be able to um, modify? Yeah. So ours actually had problems as well. I didn't think we'd be that honest, but here we are. I hope they're not <laughs> in the room. Our current writing group kind of mutinied and splintered off from the bigger six group because we realized the three of us had simpatico and I don't know how I put this nicely, but we really wanted to be prolific. We were aspirationally prolific. And that's not to say that the others weren't, but it, in the nicest way I can say this, but it didn't feel like the writing group was helping us achieve that. So the three of us felt like we were pushing each other and giving each other feedback for those journals. And the feedback from the other people was not as helpful. I'll say these in this the most polite way I can, right? And it was really uncomfortable because we were like, how do you feel this way as well? I feel this way as well. How do we get out of this? And so we just kind of snuck out. And this is the first time I'm very transparent about this. Um, and so I hope for you, it works from the get-go, but I'm a living is that it took a while for us to be this well-oiled machine. 
and and I hope it stays this way, but you never know, right? Lives change, people change. That's my first comment. Uh, two other comments I wanted to make is the first is I'm very cognizant of the fact that not everyone in this room could join the Women of OB group. Um, but but Bobby pointed out Katie took initiative and started that. Start a group, right? I suspect the OB division would be very open to their, I, I don't, I can't speak for that, but they're being a men of OB group, right? So I hope no one's feeling excluded here, but instead is taking away the message like start a thing. People are interested. Um, and I'll, I'll mention as the third point is I'm kind of one of those weirdos who's not on social media. And the only thing that ever makes me want to think about joining is the women of OB group. I'm really sad that I'm not part of it, but I really don't want to join Facebook. That's not a comment to the women of OB group. It's clearly working, but I hope at some point, maybe it'll be on the academy infrastructure or something, because I'll join in a heartbeat. I probably should just get over it and join Facebook, but I thought I'd be transparent to any other people in the room who are also like, absolutely not, no Facebook. Yeah. Thank you, um, I think we'll turn it over to Lauren. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much, Kira and Bobby. Um, we are getting a lot of great questions in the chat about this calendar. So I think um, we will leave space for Lauren to introduce it. And I think there's a lot of interest. So thank you both so much for all of your thoughts and sharing your experiences. We really appreciate it. So thank you. You guys will just give me one second to stop sharing all of my screens here. Perfect. All right. So the moment you all have been patiently waiting for, I am going to paste instructions to our MCC writing calendar in the chat. Drum roll, as Roman has said. Uh, but I'm going to share my screen so you guys don't have to scramble to open it because I'm going to uh, share the instructions with you guys right now. Can we see the instructions here? Yes. yes. So the writing calendar that we are rolling out is a public Google calendar. And the purpose is just to provide the infrastructure for all of you folks, people in the OB division, people in the um, academy more broadly to find a place to host times to co-write together, um, maybe to organically foster some writing groups and just to kind of give a space for these types of, you know, women of OB or Kira's types of feedback groups to organically grow. Um, we do wanna note that we are not actively forming or managing writing groups in this session. We are just giving you guys the infrastructure to you know, find a place to do that and to, to grow these groups yourselves. Um, so there are two ways for you guys to use the calendar and I'll actually pull up the calendar here in just a moment. Uh, but just at the highest level, you can view the calendar. Um, it's public. You can see all of the existing sessions just by having the link. So it's linked here. Um, if you want to click that yourselves. And you can also just search for the calendar in Google Calendar or like in Outlook and integrate it with your calendar just to see upcoming writing sessions. The second way to use the calendar is to be a host, to add your own sessions. And um, in order to add anything to the session, to the calendars, um, you will need to get permissions. And the host of the PDW have uh, generously agreed to manage that process. So you can email the mccwritinggroups at gmail.com and just make sure you add the email that you want to be able to edit that Google calendar um, and put that you'd like to be a host or like to have editing privileges. And you can add your own sessions in there. Um, it's a really easy process for us to add you guys. And um, we did want to note, though, that this is not our primary inbox. So if you'll be patient with us um, as we, you know, we don't know exactly what to expect in terms of how many people will be using this. So um, please be patient with us as we, you know, work through this in real time. Um, so in those invitations, I'll show you an example of what some of these look like and what information, but basically just put as much information as possible. Um, and when you're using this calendar, I want to challenge all of you to be open minded because you're gonna be dropping into sessions and you may not know the people that are there or you might not know the person hosting. And so the idea again is for this to organically allow you to make connections, right? We're the making connections committee. So we wanna provide you a place to uh, get to know people that you might not ordinarily run into, right? Or people that you might not co-write with. So be open-minded and just be welcoming to anyone that joins and feel free to just drop in. And even if you don't wanna talk, you just wanna be camera off and have some community. That's that's okay too. So 
Um, just a couple notes to remember, this is a fully public calendar. So like operate with caution and like, you know, safety first, right? Because we used to have like Zoom bombing be a big phenomenon and it seems less of a big deal, but um, you know, uh, like something as simple as a password or something as simple as a waiting room can help you kind of just make sure that all the right folks are there. Um, and so we also just want to note, like we're not the best with the tech support side of things. So if you have questions about Google Calendar itself, then um, Google Calendar has lots of frequently asked questions in Q&A. Uh, but admittedly, uh, I don't really know Google suites that well. So um, the moment you've all been waiting for, we can look at the calendar now. So you are also now looking at my personal calendar. <laughs> oh, wait, you're not because I screen pause screen sharing. Let's resume. I'm going to stop again because I have to switch screens. Sorry, guys. Like Kristen said, no matter how long you Zoom, you always have screen sharing problems. There we go. All right, we're back in action, yeah? So you can see now my calendar and the MCC Writing Group's calendar, um, but I'm sharing it from this view because I want to show you how you can add your own session. So you can see we have already pre-populated some writing sessions, some of our Making Connections committee members and Kira and Bobby have generously agreed to add some sessions in there to get us started. Um, so starting next week, we have a drop-in Pomodoro session in the morning and then a PhD student targeted session in the afternoon. Um, thank you to Brandon and to Chris Winchester for being our PhD student MCC reps who are helping us out with the, with the uh, PhD student sessions. Um, I encourage you, they're both the nicest humans, so I encourage you to drop into their sessions. Um, I mean, all the people who have sessions um, are obviously nice and kind and everything. Bailey and I are hosting a session on Wednesday afternoon. Um, I put another next Wednesday as well in there. And um, Yoast, is that? Yes, has one on Monday as well. So um, feel free to drop into any of these. We welcome you, and hopefully we can make some of those organic groups from there. Um, but the way that you will actually add your own sessions, and this is what we really are asking you know, you guys to, to do and help with, because the way this will work is that people really buy in, right? So you can, once you have permissions on the calendar, um, you can add a session. It's a very similar process if you're doing this from Outlook. Um, but once you have permissions, you can just select the calendar. So, you know, ordinarily this would go on my personal calendar, but you can also um, change that setting to post directly to the MCC Writing Group's calendar. Um, make sure you, you know, say we're going to do a drop in uh, writing hours, or maybe you want to do um, targeted at like junior faculty. I can't type fast when people are watching because that's how it goes, right? Uh, make sure you put in the time and date and you set the time zone so everyone knows um, exactly when and where you're going to be because we're all over the place, of course. Um, and make sure your date's in there. Pop a link in. You can choose your um, Skype, Zoom, Google Meet, whatever of choice that you would like to use. Put in a description of what people can expect. Like, for example, you know, are you going to do Pomodoros? Are you going to check in for like 15, 20 minutes? and then log out and log back in at the end of like an hour or two and just check in on goal progress. Um, like we said, there's lots of different ways to implement writing groups. And so once you've done that, you can save and then you see it pop in on the calendar. Um, so like we said, I've put a description here for the session Bailey and I are hosting. Um, drop-in session, we'll do 25 minute Pomodoros. We'll start with a check-in, but since they're drop-in, you can come in and out anytime. You don't have to stay for two hours. You can literally just drop in for you know one Pomodoro if that's all you have time for. Um, but just remember that if you're popping in and out, it might be that we're in the middle of a Pomodoro. So if everybody's camera off, then that tells you we're in the middle of writing and then we'll pop back in, you know, in between like one and 25 minutes. So um, just, you know, keep yourself muted and just kind of figure out what's going on and go along with the norms there. Um, so this is our calendar. We hope that you guys will um, join us in some of these writing sessions and I'm going to peek at the chat. I assume there's probably some questions there now. For... Pirates hidden treasure. I'm glad you think so, Roman. Um, make sure that if you guys have any questions, you can email the MCC writing groups email. Um, I popped the link in the chat to those instructions, but we are going to get the emails of everyone who registered for this session and send out this instruction manual. So then everyone who registered, even if they couldn't fully log in um, and watch the whole session, will know exactly where to find this. And we hope that you guys will join us in writing and maybe form some writing groups. So 
thank you all so much for today. This has been really fun and really awesome and hope to see you guys uh, in some writing groups. Happy writing. Yes, hope to see you soon. And thank you to Kira, Bobby, and Kristen for um, all of your thoughts today. Thank you.